For taste, we know that a newborn infant, uh, even a premature infant, has a strong sweet preference. One reason that that's thought to be is because uh, sweets may be a signal for uh, calorie-rich food. Uh, children are growing, they, li they like calories. And of course, in primitive people, where all this evolved, or even earlier, sweet things were good. Uh, they were rich in vitamins, minerals, and calories. And so infants and, and most animals that consume plants uh, have a strong preference for sweet things. For bitter things, it's got a kind of the reverse. Uh, we know that infants, young infants, they can certainly detect bitter things and they tend to reject them. And this is thought, again, to be a biologically important way of avoiding poisons. Most bitter things, not all, but most bitter things are poison. Uh, one of the anecdotes I like to talk about is, is mothers complaining about how their two, three, or four-year-old children won't eat vegetables. Well, one reason they won't is because vegetables are bitter. And actually, that's a good it's a good thing for them to be w very wary of bitter substances. Uh, we find a rejection of bitterness really develops most strongly after the age of one or two. Again, at about the time the infant would normally be leaving the mother and putting things in the mouth. And uh, so you don't want to put bitter things in the mouth uh, because they, could, they can be dangerous. Smaak heeft dus een genetische en een evolutionaire component. Maar is het niet ook een kwestie van wennen? Uit onderzoek blijkt dat kinderen die borstvoeding krijgen eerder een nieuwe groente accepteren dan zij die met de fles zijn grootgebracht. When you think of the sensory experiences, formula basically is never changing. Mother's milk is changing not only during the course of the day, but it's reflecting the type of foods that she's eating, and that's going to change from uh, the morning to the evening. So it's a very, very rich, varied sensory experience. Formula, on the other hand, from a flavor perspective, is culturally indistinct. It's the same flavor throughout the first few months of life. And so one suggestion is, is that the reason why they saw increased acceptance of vegetables in the breastfed infant is because they experienced a variety of flavors during, uh, in mother's milk. Can a kind in first instance on all smaken wennen? Rond de vierde maand verandert de smaakwaardering drastisch. The most dramatic one being infants that are exposed to protein hydrolysate formula. This is given to infants who can't uh, or won't accept normal uh, milk-based formulas. And it's, it's very, very bitter, sour, awfully, awful, awful flavored substance. If you give this to, to very young infants, infants less than four months of age, uh, they will continue to accept it possibly, uh, again, clinically, at least it's been shown, up through adolescence. Whereas if you give a normal adolescent this stuff, they'll spit it out in your face, it's so awful. So that's, that, I think, really is the best evidence so far from a clinical perspective. It's a puzzling question about why the very young infant, who we know is able to detect and reject bitterness, uh, still w is willing to accept these uh, protein hydrolysate formulas. And, and, and I think the reason is that they're, although they are bitter, they're not so bitter that they are totally rejected by a hungry infant. As a consequence, the infants are, get reinforced from that feeding because they get calories and, and they, they feel good and, and full and what have you. Uh, and somehow or other, this leads to a long-term preference or at least acceptance of this kind of flavor, which if infants aren't exposed to it, they will never, never want to touch. Uh, this stuff is really, really bad. We believe that individual food preference, at least some of them, are learned at an early stage. But I should say that's a controversial uh, belief. Uh, and there are other people in our field, Paul Rosen being one of them, that uh, thinks that early experience plays very little role in later acceptance and, 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 and food preferences. One of the experiments we're doing is looking at the infant's acceptance of a new food. In this case, it's carrots. One group of infants had a variety of flavor experiences. They experienced a number of different types of vegetables for eight days. Another group received the same type of vegetable for eight days. And we're comparing acceptance patterns between these groups. And perhaps this type of information uh, will lead us to strategies to enhance food acceptance in young infants and try to determine what are the types of experiences that infants have and how does that impact on their food choices.